So this weekend we have an event that I think has flown under a lot of people's radars. I haven't really heard anyone talking about this card. And I think there's a couple reasons behind that. And let me be a little bit critical for a second. The first problems come from the main event. So we have Junior Dos Santos, who's one of the biggest Brazilian stars, facing Blagoy Ivanov, who's making his promotional debut. And the guy has made a lot of noise outside of the UFC, but unless you like really, really keep up with the sport, you're going to have no idea who this guy is. So him headlining a card, especially making his debut against a guy that's so well-known like Junior, it, it just really doesn't make sense to me. It's like the UFC is saying, our heavyweight division is so weak that instead of getting a prospect in and then building them up through the rankings, now we're just going to throw them in there against an ex-champion as in the main event. It just really doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, the UFC doesn't even have the common courtesy to have a picture of this dude on, on their website yet. I mean, look at the promotional poster. This It just looks like the guy made it in like five minutes. It just says heavyweights. Like that's enough for people to spend $100 on a ticket and tune in. It's just, I, I don't really understand the main event. And the rest of the card just doesn't really have any substance to back it up. I feel like I'm being really negative right now, but I'm usually a guy who can find the positives in every card, but this one just doesn't really have that much pizzazz to me. Sage Northcutt in the co-main event. I mean, the guy did nothing, like nothing in his last performance said that he deserved a co-main event. It's just this card's all around kind of weak for me. Maybe I'm making too big of a deal about it, but I mean, I really feel like I'm missing something here with this card. But without any further ado, let's get right into these six predictions. For the first fight on the main card, we have Kat Zingano versus Marion Renault. These are some pretty old fighters. I'm pretty I think Kat's like maybe 36 and Marion's 41. Usually if you're 41, you're getting your brain knocked around like a pinball machine, but in the women's divisions that doesn't really happen as much. If you look at the stats, these girls are about as close to virtually identical as you can be, and I think their skill sets are very similar as well. They're pretty well-rounded. The only thing is, Kat lately just really hasn't been the same fighter she used to be. Uh, I really, personally, I don't think she's been the same since the Ronda Rousey loss. Um, I know she has some brain issues now and she gets treatment for that. I just, I feel really bad for Kat, but I don't really think she's going to pull this one off. While on the other hand, Marion Renault has looked extremely motivated in her past couple fights. She said she's on the way to a title shot. Um, her submission of Sarah McMahon was insane. I really didn't expect her to pull that off, but it showed that she's like a gritty veteran. She knows what she's doing in there, and she's never out of the fight. So I think Marion is in a better position to win. Uh, even if it's just mentally, I think that gives her enough of an edge over Kat to pull out the victory. In Kat's last fight against Ketlin Vieira, I mean, she just looked scared to pull the trigger. She couldn't really string anything together. She was getting taken down and couldn't get back up. I mean, it really was kind of sad to watch because I'd consider myself a fan of Kat, and I'll be pulling for her to win this fight, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think Marion is going to use her motivation and be able to implement her skill set, and Kat won't. So I think here we can see Marion by decision or maybe a submission. I mean, she submitted Sarah McMahon, who was an Olympic-level wrestler, so don't sleep on her submission skills. But she also has good boxing as well. So I think the most likely thing is probably Marion by decision. I think it'll be a close decision, but I do have Marion by decision. One thing that could be looked at as a positive to this card is the return of Chad Mendez, who was on a two-year USADA suspension for a performance enhancing, an illegal performance enhancing drug that he was taking. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he publicly admitted that he did mess up and uh, take it on purpose, and he has apologized for that. But anyway, he's back, and I'm assuming he's clean. And he's facing Miles Jury, who, in my opinion, is a tough fight for Chad. He's big, tall, long, and rangy. He's got a lot longer reach than Chad. Uh, great striking, decent takedown defense. I mean, I, I think it's a bad matchup for Chad, especially coming off a layoff. And when these guys come back after retirement or layoffs or suspensions and stuff like that, they're never the same, or I should say very rarely the same, and it's really hard to predict what, what happens. I mean, like when Carlos Condit came back against Neil Magny, he was he was scared to throw, he couldn't land anything, and he just wasn't the same as he used to be. And I mean, this is a Chad that's coming back off of being on drugs, so I have no idea how his strength is going to be compared to how it was, his speed, his reflexes. And the thing I'm worried about the most is Chad's chin. His last two performances, he got knocked out, and the 
punch that Frankie threw that knocked him out and looked like it had no power on it. I mean, he just got starched. I think Chad's only way to win this fight would be by some good old-fashioned lay-and-pray wrestling. I think if he tries to strike with Miles, it's not going to end up well for him. Um, basically, anytime he's on the outside, I think he's going to be getting lit up with strikes. And like I was just talking about, I don't really think his chin can take that many hard punches. So I think if Chad were to win, it would be just by complete complete wrestling, 100% just try to get takedowns and, and stay on top. But I, I don't really think Chad's going to win this fight. Just the, the common, like, the consistency of guys coming back and winning is really low. They usually don't. And I think Miles Jury was a bad matchup for Chad anyway. So I've got Miles winning by keeping Chad off of him and just basically piecing him up with strikes the whole time and winning by decision. Next up, we have Randy Brown versus Nico Price. Two young welterweight prospects. Randy Brown is the guy that exposed Mickey Gall. So I guess he semi, kind of, might have a little bit of star power. And uh, Nico Price is 11-1, I think five wins in the UFC. So he's a pretty consistent guy. With this matchup, I got to give Randy Brown the edge on the feet because against Mickey Gall, he uh, pretty much outclassed Mickey. And Nico gets hit way too easily like we saw against Vincent Luke. He even got dropped in that fight. So on the feet... I will give Randy Brown the edge, but I do think if it goes to the ground, Nico will be able to lock up a submission. He's pretty good on the ground. So this fight for me is kind of a toss-up. I think it could play out like the Mickey Gall fight. I do think Nico's a lot more talented than Mickey, but I mean that in the sense that if it stays on the feet and Nico can't get takedowns, um, I think he's going to get pieced apart by Randy and he'll probably lose a decision. But if he can get it to the ground, which... Mickey kind of failed to do if he can get it to the ground and establish control I think he will be able to lock up a rear naked choke or something like that so I'm going to go ahead and say Nico by submission just because I think he will be able to get it to the ground but if he can't I do think Randy Brown will probably win by decision just because he has the better striking the reach advantage and I think Nico gets hit way too easily he's not evasive enough um, but my prediction is Nico by submission Next up, we have Dennis Bermudez versus Rick Glenn. Rick is a sort of up-and-coming guy. He's dropped a couple losses in the UFC, though. I think he might be 2-2 two two in the UFC, while Dennis Bermudez is currently on a three-fight losing streak. I think this might be one of his last chances to get a win before they cut him. To me, this really is like the off-brand version of Chad Mendez versus Miles Jury. With Dennis Bermudez, we have a guy that hasn't won in a long time. He's got a suspect chin, and in my opinion, his only way to win this fight is by wrestling, getting takedowns, and laying on top of Rick, while Rick is the taller, longer, rangier guy who has better striking and a chance to get a knockout. I mean, really, it's like an exact replica of that matchup in my mind. So without too much in-depth analysis, I'm going to say this fight goes to a decision, and I think Rick's going to pull out the victory. Dennis has not looked good in his last couple fights. In his last fight with Andre Feely, he was he couldn't get takedowns. He he was getting taken down, and it just wasn't that good of a performance. And I think we're going to see more of the same here. So I have Rick Glenn winning by a close decision. For the co-main event, we have Sage Northcutt versus Zach Otto. I don't really think this is deserving of a co-main event spot whatsoever. I'm personally not really interested in this fight because I, I don't think either guy's going anywhere if they win. And I think the majority of MMA fans have woken up to the fact that Sage isn't really as good as he was hyped up to be. I mean, he was kind of a hype train. And based on his last couple performances, I mean, he's just like, he's just average at best. There's not really much you can say about him. I, I mean, he's got good karate, good striking, but it's not like he has knockout power and he gets hit way too easily. He's, he gets dropped. I mean, he got dropped like four times in his last fight against an absolute nobody. His wrestling is decent, but he also gets taken down. I mean, he's just not very consistent at all. Uh, his best attribute, I guess, is his, his look because he's marketable. But other than that, it's just, I mean, it, it is what it is. And Zach, he's a guy that's, had some success in the UFC. In his last fight, he knocked out Mike Pyle, but then again, Mike Pyle was like, that was his retirement fight. He was old and probably not motivated, so you can't really put too much weight on that victory. And before that, Zach got knocked out by Lee Jingliang. I mean, both of these guys, it just doesn't really scream co-main event to me. It screams like fight pass main event. But anyway, 
For some reason, this fight is at welterweight, even though Sage has said on multiple occasions he fights way better at lightweight, and his only UFC losses come at welterweight, so I don't know why Uriah is letting him stay at welterweight and keep fighting. He's just... He's just not exactly big enough for the weight class, I don't think. So in terms of the matchup, I think Sage is going to do what he usually does and try to keep Zach on the outside with kicks, and he'll, he'll defend any takedowns or as many as he can. I don't think he's going to try to strike like in the pocket or in the clinch because it seems like every time he did that in his last fight against T-Balt Gowdy, he got dropped and, and tagged. Um, so I think Sage is going to keep it on the feet for as long as he can, uh, keep Zach outside like I was saying and if he needs to he'll shoot like for a desperation takedown but to be honest with you I'm really not confident in either one of these guys to get the victory I'm, I'm just not confident in this fight whatsoever I don't care about the outcome uh, but I'm figuring that the matchmakers and Dana are probably giving Sage a guy they think he can beat and I mean the dude has been knocked out cold before and Sage's strong point probably is striking but with this one I just got to say Sage by decision I don't think Zach's going to be able to do much in the striking, and I think t Team Alpha Male has made Sage's wrestling a lot better to where he'll be able to to defend takedowns. Um, but I gotta say, I think Sage is going to win by decision. I don't really care, but I've got Sage by decision. To top off this weird card, we've got a pretty weird main event: Junior Dos Santos versus Blagoy Ivanov. If you're not familiar with Blagoy, he was the World Series of Fighting heavyweight champion. He's 16 and one. Um, in 2000, it was either 2006 or 2008, he beat Fedor Emelianenko in the Combat Sambo World Championship. So the dude has legit skills. Junior has obviously faced way better competition, faced and beaten way better competition. But Blagoy is certainly not a slouch. Is he deserving of this fight? Maybe technically yes in, in skill set because I don't think Junior is the same fighter he used to be. Even though he's like 34, 35, and, which is still pretty young for the heavyweight division, I think he's out of his prime. Um, so I think in terms of skill set, yeah, maybe. But like I was saying earlier, to be a main event of a card in Boise, Idaho, it just doesn't really make that much sense. But I'll stop talking about that and I'll start just talking about the matchup. Junior probably has better boxing, and I'm assuming he hits harder. He's the taller guy, so I'm going to be expecting him to try to land big power shots. But on the other hand, Blagoy, obviously being a Sambo world champion, he's going to have really good throws and ground game, which I think Junior's a little bit lacking in. And uh, Junior recently got popped by USADA. I can't remember if they said he wasn't guilty or not or something, but I mean, the dude is obviously not the same fighter that he used to be especially in the fight against Stipe. I mean, I know Stipe is Stipe, but I mean, he just kind of went out there and got knocked out. But this fight, I mean, it's really like taking a shot in the dark. We haven't seen Blagoy against current UFC level competition. I mean, it's pretty much like his stats are just, it's like just having random stats that we haven't seen applied to a, a UFC level fight. So this is kind of a tough prediction. But just the fact that Junior is so out of his prime. I really don't think the matchmakers would have made this fight unless they felt like Blagoy had a, a good chance to win. And I mean, the dude is a prospect, probably one of the best heavyweight prospects outside of the UFC right now. And Blagoy's only loss was to Alexander Volkov, who is like the second or third ranked heavyweight in the UFC right now. So his only loss was to really good competition. And he's beaten UFC vets like Sean Jordan. This is a really tough fight to predict, but since Junior can't take a punch as well as he used to, and Blagoy's never, or at least never gone five rounds with UFC level competition, I think there will be a finish. Um, and Blagoy just has such an advantage with that Sambo and on the ground. So I think I'm going to go Blagoy by finish.